So what we're going to talk about today is what we're calling micro-ONOS, which you can think of as ONOS 3.0, however you want to think about it, just sort of the next generation in the ONOS family. So what is micro-ONOS? Um, as I said, it's the next generation architecture of ONOS. Uh, we intend it to be complementary with the existing ONOS platform, meaning that we want to continue on with the ONOS brand name, the ONOS architecture, and sort of the ONOS approach of the way we've been doing things. The aim with this project is to create a platform for operations. So we want to look at configuration, which the current ONOS does not do, control, which it does do, add things like monitoring, verification, updates, diagnostics. We basically want to make it a platform that allows us to do more than just be an SDN controller. Uh, we want to provide first-class support for uh, RAN, for uh, uh, mobile applications. Uh, sort of a departure from the current ONOS. The current ONOS, I like to describe it as this block of granite. It's a big, monolithic Java program. has a lot of APIs, but it's basically one single address space. We want to move much more to a microservices gRPC kind of model where we use Kubernetes in order to deploy containers that do support of different things. People will be able to write their own applications that don't run as part of our address space, for example, which is something that's difficult to do with the current ONOS. We also want to support next, gen uh, next generation SDN interfaces. You've probably heard throughout the talks, next generation SDN is something we've been talking a lot about. You can think of that as GNMI, GNOI, P4 runtime. These are the things that we're looking at as sort of the next uh, thing to come on after OpenFlow. And we very much want to make it cloud native. Everything will be running on Kubernetes. We'll be running things in containers and trying to keep to a, uh, an architecture based on microservices. So the uh, architectural tenants, uh, basically, we want to make it as modular as possible. I mean, I know every architecture slide you see, nobody says, yeah, we want to make it a big blob and have everything be intertwined. But we're trying to enforce that by using a microservices model. That's a good way to kind of keep your interfaces clean. Allows you to do scale in and out using Kubernetes. You don't have to worry about doing it yourself, which is a big advantage. And we really want to adapt to different size deployment needs, which is something we have trouble with now with the existing ONOS. It comes out of the box very large. It's very difficult to make it small. Uh, we are moving ahead with a state-of-the-art tool chain for development and deployment. I'll talk a little bit more about that on another slide. We want to provide native support for things like P4 and OpenConfig, using OpenConfig models to do things like checking inbound requests to make sure that they actually match what the device can support, things like that. You'll hear a lot more about that in our talk later. Uh, and we want to continue with the high performance, high availability, high availability and scalability uh, that we got from legacy ONOS. So that was something we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort in. You heard about Comcast deployment today. I can say that word now. Um, this is something we spent a lot of time on. We don't want to lose what we learned on that. And the way we will take advantage of that is it will continue to use Atomics which is what the current ONOS uses. It's an implementation of Raft that's used for things like shared data structures, HA, things of that nature. This is kind of a busy slide. I'm going to just move over here and point a little bit. So this is kind of the idea of what we're looking at. You can see on the top, these are the kind of northbound-ish kind of things that you might write yourself. App X and Y are things that someone has a random app they need to do something to do. ZTP is zero touch provisioning. You might have seen the demos over in the, in the demo area. That's something that we wrote as an example of something you might be able to do on the north. Intense would be something you'd consider as a, a, as a very high level abstraction. That's something that we really want to be able to pull out of the core, which is not true with current ONOS. And then your GUIs and CLIs would be sitting. Notice these are all on standard APIs, either gRPC, P4 runtime. Uh, we very much want to stick with that kind of a model. Everything is held together with Kubernetes. That's really important. We really are pushing to have Kubernetes be the way that we can do scale up, scale down, container management, lifecycle management. Uh, some of the things that might come in the ONOS, what is now the ONOS core, are now broken up into these subcategories, RAN for radio, control, which is your standard kind of SDN controller kind of thing, things like flows and uh, that sort of thing. Config is a new thing. We didn't do config really in ONOS, so this is a way using GNMI that we can actually take known configurations for devices or new configurations for devices and make it so on the network. We'll talk more about that later. Ops is uh, for things like software upgrade, shutting things up and down. That's using GNOI, which is another one of these new APIs. Uh, topology is the standard stuff, keeping track of who's doing what to who. 
Certs are really important for GNMI because it allows you to do things like rotate certificates through the system for security. And then the southbound um, are various protocols to support things like currently out of the box, we intend to support P4 runtime and GNMI. GNOI, you might put something there like OpenFlow, you might put something there like NetConf, uh, depending on what you needed. And then over here, our key value stores, this is really important, this is where we're getting our flexibility from, that's Atomics. So that's allowing different instances of this to communicate with each other in a reliable way. So for uh, micro ONOS, we've changed the tool chain a little bit. Uh, classic ONOS is very much Java. We're moving ahead to using Golang for micro ONOS. Uh, there were various reasons for doing that, which we can discuss later if people are interested, but it's a very robust system language. It fits very well with gRPC. So that's why we chose that. Um, we're using Angular 7 for any GUI components. You've seen any of the demos that are around. Uh, Protoc is a way to basically generate your client and server-side stubs in any language you want from a, um, from a model. We're using Docker for container management. Um, Onos is old enough that we started with a model of installing software and running as a Linux service and things like that. We're doing it all through Kubernetes and Docker now. And then, as I said, Kubernetes for deployment. So in terms of what the code looks like, trying to keep with this separating our APIs into nice buckets, we have a multi-repo now. Current Onos is basically a monorepo with a lot of stuff in it. We really want to keep the APIs separated, and so we did that by making separate repos. So any of those boxes that you saw on that slide two slides ago, each one of those boxes is a repo. So the ones we have today, Onos Config, we talked about, that's the GNMI, uh, the GNMI uh, application onto uh, switches. Onos Topo is a topology manager. Control doesn't do much right now. That's going to do things like, the, like flows. Uh, we have the GUI and the CLI are completely separate now. These things all depend on each other, but they don't actually get built together. They're built and deployed separately. More refactoring will follow. This is, we're only a few months into this project, so I'm sure things will come up that we'll want to change. And everything that you will see today is under a single GitHub root project called Onos Project. So in terms of the tooling, um, current Onos uses our own installed Jenkins and our own installed Garrett. We don't like that model so much because it puts us in the IT space we don't want to be in. We don't want to maintain these things if we don't have to. So we've moved to a complete cloud model. We use GitHub for as much as we can. So that includes the source code management, things like code review, all of our docs or MD files that are up there. People had trouble finding our wiki before. So everything is kind of, we want everything right, in people's, right where people can find it easily. Um, in terms of what we're doing for the code, we run uh, Golang CI Lint, which is a set of tools that allow you to do various kinds of code and formatting checks right as part of CI. It's really nice for catching things quickly. Um, as I mentioned before, Docker Hub hosts all the images. We're using Travis CI right now for continuous integration. Uh, that's mostly because it was free and easy to set up. I don't know if we'll continue with that or not. Maybe we will go to Jenkins eventually as we have to do things that are a little more complicated. But for right now, Travis does everything we need. And uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with something called coveralls.io. It's a sort of cloud uh, coverage analysis tool. It's really kind of nice. You just feed your coverage files to it. It generates nice graphs for you and things. So we're very much trying to make other people do as much of our work for us as we can in the, in the CI area. A lot of information on this slide. You don't have to go into it in tremendous detail, but this is just kind of what we're working on. So what you might have seen in the demo, if you saw it, was that we're doing GNMI northbound and southbound currently. So we have GNMI comes in where you say, I want to modify these three devices in this way. Southbound, we generate three requests to update the switches. Uh, that's what the multi-device config is about. This stuff is model-driven, meaning that we have the ability to take in a Yang model, like open config is currently what we're using. So that if you say, hey, I want to set this you know, read-only variable to a value, we'll go, sorry, not allowed by the model. Um, what else? On well, GUI we talked a little bit about. Um, we have found that as programmers, we love CLIs because you can program against them. It's nice to script against them. But visualization is really important, particularly things like these models. There are these huge, monstrous things with these paths that are 12 items deep. Uh, the GUI is really nice with that because you can do opens and collapses and stuff. 
Um, own it is sort of an interesting thing we did. So one of the things we wanted to do right away was have integration level testing. We had a lot of um, unit testing initially. But when you do things like hook it up to device simulators or hook it up to real devices, it's much harder to do. So what Onnit does is basically a way of interacting with Kubernetes and deploying things like device simulators, Onos instances, CLI instances, things of that nature. Um, and then I talked a little bit about ZTP. That's sort of a demo application of how you might do zero touch provisioning in a real system. So the current plan is to continue with config because that's something that's really not supported by Onos Classic. And that's something we've been asked about a lot. So we're gonna continue forward with, with uh, the GNMI configuration. Um, we're gonna do some initial stuff for Onos Control to allow us to do things like create simple flows. Um, we have to move ahead with the, with the RAN support because again, Onos Classic doesn't have it. It doesn't make sense to do it in two places. So if we're gonna do it somewhere, we're gonna do it here. And the last bullet is really important. Stratum is now, you, you guys have probably heard, is probably is open source now, so it's really important that we have a set of tools that allow you to program it, which is Onos Classic, and configure it, which is Micro Onos. Uh, anybody who's interested in how we operate, we do a lot of stuff on Slack. We have a very distributed team. We have developers in Europe, Asia, North America. So we do a lot of things around the clock on Slack. Um, we have TST meetings every two weeks. You can find all this information on those MD files I talked about if you look into the Onos project uh, GitHub. Uh, we are using a, the, the standard fork pull request model that GitHub uses, so if you find things you want to implement or things you want to change, whatever, just do that and you can start talking to us through the, the GitHub. And we also have uh, an email mailing list, Onos Dev. That's general for Micro Onos and for Onos Classic, but basically everyone involved in the project reads that email um, group. And that's it for my yapping part. So. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, sure. Yes, I believe, I, I haven't registered in such a long time. I think you have to first register with the Ono Slack and then everything's open. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you intend to blend Onos with micro Onos? Is there is that in the roadmap, or do you just expect to solve different problems with the two? So it, that is in the roadmap. The, the initial thing that I've laid out here is just for config, which is yeah. not in, in the current Onos. We very much want to continue being able to use both together. Because, for example, uh, the current Onos has a lot of protocol implementations in it that we probably, ISIS, do we want to invest that again? Probably not. So we definitely want to come up with a way of either through gRPC interfaces or through adapters or something of utilizing the current Onos in the same container model to do whatever it is we need to do to, that make things, that makes sense. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Bob. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Sorry I missed the beginning of your, of your presentation, but did you, did you talk about, or are you going to talk a little bit about um, how my, Micronos is going to handle um, kind of uh, sort of the networking part of software-defined networking rather than just the configuration part? That no, I actually didn't talk about that at all. I only talked about the config portion. Um, at least initially when we do control, we're going we're to focus on P4 runtime. We're not going to focus on open flow. We know that. Um, other than that, a lot of it will depend on, like, for example, the, the, the radio network, what that actually looks like. We know that's going to be quite a bit different than the networks we're looking at because the ones we've had up until now have been fairly static. The mobile network changes all the time. Things drop in and out. That's definitely going to cause a lot more, you know, the, the system to, to perturb a lot more. So I think the idea is anything new, like if we had to implement something specifically for radio, we would do it at, in this containered model but we certainly would not throw away all the work that we've done on Onos. That would be silly. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, in this architecture, are you using any, da any databases or anything like that, or is it all just memory? So you'll, you'll be able to ask the people who know more about that in a little while, but uh, we are using Atomics. 
which is sort of a distributed database. It's not like a relational database. It's more of a distributed maps. It's, it's, it's built around distributed primitives, basically, that are persisted in a way that guarantees high availability. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's the model we intend to use. That's what, that's what classic Onos uses. That served us very well on these large deployments, and I think we're going to stick with that. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>